So tell us about yourself and what interests you. <laughs> okay. Hi, Chris. <laughs> Hello. Um, yeah, uh, to my person. First of all, I study German studies and history in 2007 um, before I switched to art history and media theory um, at an uh, art university or an art academy in Karlsruhe. It's in the south of Germany. Yeah, and uh, during that I also studied uh, photography and media art um, and worked for the Center for Art and Media in Karlsruhe. Uh, it's popular for its museum, uh, media museum where uh, they exhibit video games and something like that. Yeah, and I finished everything in the beginning of 2016, so now I <laughs> try to be a freelancer. And um, yeah, mainly I write for art magazines and um, online magazines and sometimes, sometimes for art catalogues or um, exhibition catalogues and so on. Okay, thank yeah. you. <laughs> That's awesome. And um, I am being enlightened by this interview as well because I, I knew that you were into the academics of art and aesthetics because uh, the, the first contact that we had, um, I believe you were, it was either you or, or someone that you were working with was operating a, uh, a blog on Tumblr that photographed food. Yeah. It was a food centric true, yeah. blog and it was very good. The photography was great and I, I really enjoyed it. And shortly after I, um, we had been in contact through that blog, just you know, following each other, um, yeah. I received the email from you about a study that you were doing about Tumblr and visual culture and different ways of looking at Tumblr as a as a blog medium, but also as a um, exhibition medium. Yeah, um, or an artistic medium. <laughs> an artistic and an artistic medium, um, and I was really interested in that because um, I had been operating my Tumblr for that particular one for a couple of years at that point and the questions you were asking were like right up the alley of like the kind of stuff that I was trying to like get out there into okay. the world so okay. um if you want to talk a little bit about um some of your uh tumblr um projects um yeah. even some of the earlier ones and how that project got started um that would be cool if, if you want to talk a little bit about that yeah, at that time, um, when I was uh, um, asking you for the study, um, I planned a detailed article uh, about the functions and operations of Tumblr, um, because I think uh, Tumblr is very special and quite different from Instagram, for example. So I think Instagram is very conventional and the images um, are relative, uh, or relatively similar to each other. And um, I think it holds no surprises, so I love Tumblr for um, that uh, chaos or disorder or, um, yeah, surprises. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it makes a lot possible and for me, um, and it brings me a lot of ideas, and um, it's really spontaneously, and um, I think, um, or I have not yet evaluated the study or um, um, it isn't finished yet, but um, I'm thinking about it the whole time because um, I'm watching um, Tumblr every day mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I'm asking myself what happens if these pictures come together um, between the pictures or in a um, hyper image way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so I, I was asking you that, that uh, or I think that your Tumblr is kind of um, a hyper image um, in a, or it shows a, a special uh, view of women's and a special gaze uh, of people. <laughs> Listen, or I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Feminism. And um, yeah. yeah, I like that. And I enjoy it to watch your Tumblr. Oh, the video stopped working? Yeah, okay. I think it slowed down a yeah. little bit. 
that it okay. seems to <laughs> and, yeah. have recovered. Um, well, I appreciate that. I um, So another thing that was really cool um, after I got to know first your food blog and then your more personal photography blog, um, you'd mentioned earlier that you studied photography, um, which was yeah. something I was going to ask you about because um, your photography is very high quality and very... Um, I, I love it. I think it ha you have a great um, way of seeing the world through your photography and presenting different topics, whether it be food, landscape, um, self-portraits, all of these um, things that I think are very um, indicative of the human condition and like the world around us. I, I really enjoy um, watching your photography. Um, so if, if the, is there anything that you would like to say about your personal photography um, or the photography that you do as, as artistic work um, that you present on your uh, on your Tumblr page. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if we want to talk about the special image or, or the whole Tumblr blog. Um, if you would like to. I, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what to say about it because um, I think... Um, the most time I have no ideas, <laughs> so and, and I'm thinking about so what can I do, uh, what uh, pictures I could take, mm -hmm. and um, I think it's, um, yeah, I'm just... <laughs> Exploring, maybe? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I have to think about it a little bit. Um, yeah. Because... Um, it's like, um, I don't know what to do, and then I have these, um, I think um, the pictures are results of a little, of a helpless situation. I don't know. So what to photograph, or what is interesting, I, I don't know that. So And um, how to move uh, when I photograph myself, I don't know. But, um, uh, There's no special motivation to do it. Yeah. Well, I definitely um, can relate to that. And I think that a lot of photographers have that exploratory nature about them where you don't... I think that's one of the things about photography that um, a lot of artists gravitate towards, even painters, writers, because you can dive into it without any preconceived notions and let the natural world around you dictate what is interesting. Yeah. And there are interesting things all around us, I think. So that's pretty cool. I, I like the way that you think about that because I think a lot of photographers feel the same way, although they wouldn't necessarily articulate it that way. Um, cause we like to have like a lot of, of artists like to have the idea that things are staged and composed and that they've got it, this image that they're wanting to express, but we're really dictated by what's around us. Um, especially most of us in this day and age, I feel like because we're doing so many different things, the photography comes along for the ride in a lot of ways. And I know for me, um, a lot of times you'll get that inspiration for a composition in the moment, and then you have to put it together based on what you see. You didn't plan ahead. Um, but a lot of really good, high-quality, expressive art comes out of that. Um, and I, uh, in the link or in the description of this interview on my YouTube page, I'm going to um, put a link to your Tumblr page. Um, and you can, if you'd like to say out loud, um, you know, where you're at on Tumblr, um, and any other website that you would like people to check out of yours, um, if you, if you have any others, uh, you can mention that right now. Okay. Uh, about, uh, 21 Tumblrs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> um, this is my main Tumblr and uh, that's enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's good. Okay. Um, yeah. 
All right. Well, I will. Um, I will post a link to that. Um, okay, Ani. Well, I think um, that this has been really good. Is there anything um, else uh, that you'd like to touch on in closing? Anything that you'd like to say? Anything right now? Oh, that it does remind me. Actually, before we end, I did want to uh, talk specifically about. Um, a particular piece that you had done on your Tumblr page. Um, yeah. I, I would, I wanted to hear you talk about it because um, what I've called it in my own mind, what I've named this particular piece of art of yours, the style, I, I would call it a digital collage or a moving video collage. And I know that word has most likely been used before, but I look at a lot of images, um, both past and present, and the way that you have presented this particular image that I'm talking about, and I will post a link to this particular image um, on the description of this video as well, because um, I think it's actually pretty groundbreaking. Um, but uh, you have a still photo, it's two grapefruits open, and then there's a, a piece of the grapefruit heart in the center of it. And then a female body with some fruit um, covering the, um, the groin area. And then another female face with an orange. Yeah. And there's a similar composition in the video, except for you have a female nude reclined. But then when you play the video, these, the spark, these sparkly confetti pieces drop down. Yeah on top of the image. So I don't want to talk too much about it myself um, because it's something I'm still looking at. But um, uh, anything that you would like to say about this particular image, uh, the inspiration for it, um, yeah. and the conception of it, I, I would love to hear. Yeah. Um, the video collage is a very small part of my graduation work. Um, but the full video is about 20 minutes um, or something like that. And um, during my photographic studies, I have often created um, slideshows um, of pictures, you know, from my Tumblr too, and um, combined them with music or with other pictures um, and so on. Um, but I told you I have uh, many other Tumblr blogs, and there I collect popular motifs. Um, popular motifs uh, include, for example, fruits, or rainbow fruits and body, rainbow at the skin, and um, all that stuff, eggs. <laughs> mm -hmm. I often uh, can see eggs. And um, <laughs> this, I think um, this results an image that I call um, kickoff image. Okay. And um, I think that <laughs> it's a nice word for it because uh, kickoff um, means that we are we um, can stimulate by them to, to make new images or the same image. So because kickoff images um, can be easily copied or co copied, mm -hmm. and um, I think everyone can uh, cut a grapefruit and take a picture of it. So um, with this uh, kickoff image, you can participate uh, in the visual world of uh, internet, of Tumblr, of um, maybe um, a particular culture. And the video collage uh, is about that participation. So video moments went to pictures, and pictures went to um, animations. And um, yeah, it's um, everything comes together um, in a very experimental way. Um, and I think it is also work about the way images or motives um, moves through the internet. So they float, and sometimes um, they stop moving um, um, unexpectedly, and you don't know why, and um, after that it, it, it um, starts new. And yeah, so this is, um, but the work is, yeah, about 20 minutes, and okay. um, there are a lot of um, other motives. This part is just about fruits, but there's a part about eggs and a part of us, so it's um, yeah something more. Okay. okay. Well, I, yeah. I I look forward I look forward to watching the full length. Have 
is that something that you're um, planning on publishing online as well once your project is finished? Yeah, I don't know about it, but um, I'm not sure. Maybe um, just small parts of it. Okay. Yeah. So publishing in parts, um, but um, I think the whole video is not good enough <laughs> because it's. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure it is. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm sure it's awesome. I, um, I I think that's a really interesting idea about the kickoff image. Yeah. A lot like to me, the way you've described it is, it's like a meme. Um, you know, yeah. you pro uh, it's like that. Only the yeah. way memes have been used in culture these days, in my mind, is at a very low intellectual level where there's not a lot of room for imagination or conception yeah. in the mind of the viewer. A lot of the memes we have these days are very direct where they tell you exactly what they want you to feel with that image. But for me, if you're using the visuals, it's not as didactic, but it still encapsulates the zeitgeist or whatever of that culture or that idea. But then everybody can in inject their own um, their own consciousness into it yeah. and come up with their own meaning for it based on how they feel, rather than being completely di directed by it. Much like art in the past, you know, we didn't have labels on yeah. the painted images during the you know romantic period in you know, Germany, you know, let's just say that, you know, in the 1850s, they weren't writing how they wanted you to feel about the painting. So your image um, allows the consciousness of yeah. the viewer to interact without being directed. Um, yeah, of course. Um, I, would, uh, I would also say that it's kind of a meme, but um, I would also say that it's not conceptual, um, but it's a little, it's something, it's pre-conceptual, um, because I think, I think it seems like um, it's full of meaning, but um, it isn't. Well, yeah. that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's wonderful. Well, um, well, this has been really good, so if there's anything else that you'd like to say in closing, just um, anything that's on your mind... Um, any projects that you have coming up that you'd like people to be aware of? It, it, really anything in closing, um, feel free to say it um, now. Uh, yeah. Um, no. Uh, no, this is my channel and <laughs> follow me. <laughs> okay. But um, no, nothing else at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, then that will conclude the interview, and in closing, I'll just say that um, it has been very enriching following your blogs throughout the past couple of years, and I definitely recommend that people take a look at the photography, the images that you're creating. Um, I believe that they're very beneficial intellectually, aesthetically, for people to um, look at these images that you're creating because I think you are taking in a, a tradition but also stepping forward in a very artistic way and um, I think a lot of people would benefit from checking that out and taking a look at your tumblers. So um, thank you. Thank you. And that will conclude thank the you. recording. Oh, you're very welcome.